I can feel it now. Long weekends calling for relaxing and enjoying life simple pleasures like seasonal cocktails that incorporate, wait for it, fruits and veggies into your glass. I'm so excited about this. Here with refreshing cocktails to bring in spring is drink expert, Evelyn Chick. Welcome to the show. Thank you. It's nice to be back in the studio and double digit temperatures out there. Okay. It's perfect. It's about time. Yeah. This is perfect timing for this segment. So I think a lot of people really enjoy a really nice cocktail, but the fact that you can add some fruits and veggies into it <laughs> as well. So um, when you, you know, how do you, you do that? What you have your basic rules on how we can do that. And I would imagine to maybe make it a little healthier as a result? Oh, absolutely. And what better time it is where farmer's markets is going to start opening up again. Yeah, yes. We have spring. We have lots of local produce to add some fruits and veggies in your cocktails and make it a little bit healthier. It's almost like a light snack. Um, so <laughs> yeah. we're going to showcase a few different ways that you can incorporate fruits and veggies. It's not just pureeing it, putting it in things, but like some new infusions, maybe some dehydrations. It's going to be great. Ooh, I I am excited. Dehydration. I want to yeah. get into that. <laughs> Simon always wants to dehydrate fruit. I'm like, what? Anyway, we're going to start with a drink that adds rhubarb one of my favorites, into the mix using, get this, a rhubarb saffron shrub. I think I've been told what a shrub is before, but I've forgotten. What is it? It sounds a little bit more complex than what it is. It's actually a sugar drinking vinegar oh. that's made with fresh fruits. So what I did here was I chopped up some rhubarb. Okay. It's um, getting into season, usually late March, April, and um, you soak it in sugar overnight um, for a few days, and that infuses a lot of flavor in the sugar. And what I did was add saffron, which is these stringy, lovely, yes. mm. really sort of earthy, aromatic um, herb in it, and then fortify it, so adding red wine vinegar to it, so it becomes so a drinking vinegar. Cool. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Gosh, I can't wait to see if it gets picked up in this rhubarb Collins that yes. we're going to make. Where do we start? Okay, so we're going to start off in the Collins glass. We're going to build okay. it right into the glass. Oh, cool. And what we're going to do is actually use a rhubarb and hibiscus gin <gasps> from Collective Arts. It's a oh, local based. distillery. Yes, they are. Yeah. Just oh. love there. Good for you. Okay. <laughs> oh, look uh, at you measuring. That's so nice, yeah. Evelyn. <laughs> I mean, you don't have to. So we're going to do an ounce of the rhubarb and hibiscus gin, and that's really going to be bringing out those nice and floral notes I was talking mm. about. And then we're going to do half an ounce of the rhubarb and saffron shrub. So it's going to oh, smell vinegary, that. but it's going to add some acidity and really oh, beautiful so interesting. notes. What an interesting oh my gosh, I want to have it in a salad, too. Oh, you yes. can have it in a salad, or you can just add some soda if you feel like, you know, not imbibing for the day. That'll be really nice okay. as well. Okay. And we're going to add a little bit of dry vermouth, and that just brings Ooh. up these really beautiful herbal flavors. So love, just love. half an ounce of half that. Ounce, half that. An I'm yeah. just going to do a little hint. Me, oh, perfect. Me just not throw a fan, right in. But, you know. <laughs> okay. okay. We're going to give it a quick stir because we want to dilute the shrub. It's going to taste uh, a little bit softer, a little okay. bit more floral. We're going to give it a stir, and then we're going to just top it up with some sparkling water. Oh my yeah, gosh, we are. this is super easy. Yeah, we oh, are. So easy. Me. Look at you. Okay. And I what, bet you can <laughs> keep that shrub in the that fridge and use it for a long time. It's going to last yes, a long time. Yes, it's going to last a long time. Vinegar and sugars is natural preservative, so it actually really, really preserves the taste. What are we going to garnish with, Evelyn? We're going to garnish this with actually a dehydrated lemon. So <gasps> when you smell it, oh. it's got concentrated caramelized flavors. <gasps> Ooh, smell it. You like it? <laughs> oh. This is what my partner wants to make. He wants to get into this. He must go in an air fryer. Oh. Oh, okay. I, I'll talk about it later. Okay. But yeah, we can plop it right in. And it? that's your first drink. That's the Look rhubarb how pretty Collins. It is. Cheers. 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 Okay, wait. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. Oh, this is delightful. <laughs> oh, boy. It's just a delightful, beautiful drink. You know that saying, though, with gin that I cannot taste in this. Uh oh. Gin makes you sin. <laughs> Not this in this one. That's of it, why. It explains a lot about some decisions I free poured. I made. Evelyn, I free poured. That's why. You're living on the edge. Okay. Or spring. It is actually very light and refreshing. Talk to me in five minutes. We're going to now <laughs> make a drink, and this is going to highlight what I'm really interested to hear is green tomatoes and cucumber, and you call this the green elixir cocktail. Yes, this is your quintessential all the greens in a glass yeah. cocktail. It's actually a variation on a Bloody Mary usually, which is made with tomatoes, some spices, salt. Uh, but what I did was actually did some green tomatoes, a mix of tomatillos, which is a little bit more acidic, and cucumber, and it's all in this green elixir here. What I did was add a little bit of salt, uh, garlic, a little bit of acid to it. So it's gonna be a glass full of delicious green herbal beauty. Oh my God, yeah. I love that. Okay, so how, how do we make this? <laughs> okay, we're going to start off so with an uh, ounce and a half of Grey Goose. Okay. okay. And we'll measure it this time, just in case. Okay. 
Okay. <laughs> Did you say ounce and a half? Ounce and a half, yeah. So let me read this a little this. bit. Uh, oh, ounce and, and a half. Yeah, perfect. Okay. So we're gonna okay. add an ounce and a half of Grey Goose. And what I like about it is it's got some nice black pepper and citrus notes to it. So it's gonna really complement all the other flavors in the okay, cocktail. Then we're gonna add about three ounces of the green elixir. So it's a mix of cucumber juice, um, held out some green tomatoes, tomatillos, and blended it. So we can just add it right in there. So you said three ounces? Yeah. Okay, I don't think I'm gonna be able to. Oh, it's, it's all oh, there. Yeah. It's yeah. all, all right oh. up to the top. There okay. she is. So Perfect. we're gonna do, oh, you're built it in glass, which is totally fine. Oh my gosh, fine. it smells oh. so good. Oh. Okay, oh, no, 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 I'm gonna do it the right oh, way. Oh, you're gonna do it the right go, way. Go, 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 okay. go, yes. It smells so good. <laughs> Have you guys smelled this? Yeah, it, it smells amazing. And uh, if you want a little bit more citrus, you can add that in there. I also made a jalapeno tincture because I really like spice. Um, and that's another way of uh, really introducing some fruits and veggies. You can infuse it in alcohol. And couple that gives drops. you is it like really drops. spicy? No, oh, medium spice. Oh yeah, okay. we got medium okay. spice. Okay. Okay. A little baby okay. here. Okay. <laughs> I am a baby. <laughs> and what we're gonna do is we're actually going to roll or throw this drink, which means just transferring liquid from one shaker tin to the other. This is, Ooh, this cool. is a very nice. Yeah, you got this? Okay, perfect. So oh, you can feel the gosh. ice kind of pushing through the strainer. Don't worry, you got this. Yeah, you just hold it to the edge and oh, you just kind of like Oh, it. I see what you're doing. Yeah. I got you. Okay. And the reason why we do this is because you don't want to over dilute the drink and take away the texture okay. that we created with the puree. So you're just going back and forth just a few back times and forth. until it's cool. Are you actually pouring it through the top again? Yeah. You're so fancy. Yeah, I've never done that. <gasps> oh now my you gosh, know how to do it. Done please. This the next time you make a Bloody Mary or a Caesar, you'll thank me. Oh, quick, <laughs> hey, you just you just brought back a memory. Okay. Bloody Marys versus Bloody Caesars. Right. Okay. So I have gone to the States yes. and said, I would like a Bloody Caesar, please. Uh -huh. I drink mine with tequila. I would like a tequila Caesar. Oh, very good. And they look at me like I have six heads. So what is the difference between a Bloody Mary and a Bloody Caesar? And why don't Americans know what a Bloody Caesar is? It's the best kept secret in Canada, but mm -hmm. actually the only difference is that there's clam juice in Caesar mixes, and often it's not available in the States, but I know it's available in Vegas because I have definitely gotten yeah. that before. <laughs> yeah. So we're just gonna pour this liquid into the glass. So as um, we dilute it, okay. the texture will change a little bit and bring out more of those herbal notes. And you know, veggies don't have to be boring. So we can garnish it with some cucumber. Cute. I like adding some herbs, so some thyme. And if you feel like Love. bopping a tomato in there, that's yeah, fine. Yeah, just herb. for a little color. That's okay. what is really great about okay. Bloody Mary. Cheers, cheers, cheers. Whatever. cheers. 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 Oh, I'm very nice. On this. this is so beautiful, Delicious. Evelyn. Good. You hit it out of the park. But we've got more drinks to make. So next we're going to be trying a drink that involves beets. Tell us about this one. Yes, so this is actually made already, but I really want to dive into beets because a lot of people love it and a lot of people don't, mm. but it's actually such a fantastic ingredient. So this is actually called Beets by E, E for Evelyn. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <laughs> so this drink involves a little bit of beet juice, so just fresh pressed, and I love a slow juicer. So some beet juice, a little bit of local honey, some lemon juice, and it's made with a non-alcoholic distillate called Lumet, which is a London dry, so it's got some nice juniper notes to it, a little bit of anise, Super citrus, cute. and we're gonna taste it together oh, because you just gotta yes. enjoy this. Are you excited? This is nice. Okay, the color. I love the presentation, and you, so you get the, the, the smell dill. of the dill, yeah. yeah. You don't taste like it's not beet forward mm -hmm. if you're not a fan of beets. This is delis delicious. Okay, oh, um, <sighs> we've got one last drink uh, to enjoy, and I'm really excited about this one because this one just screams summer to me. A strawberry margarita, but you're making yours and you're infusing it with uh, some fruit and dehydration. Right. Which, Jess, this is the word of the day as well. So talk us, uh, to us about this drink. Okay, so there's two elements in which we infuse the fruit into different elements of this drink. So I chopped up some pink strawberries and infused it in uh, Patron Silver, which is 100% Blue Weber Agave, always premium tequila. Ooh. And what it does, it adds a little bit of florality to it and a little bit of fruitiness without adding show? too much sugar, Could right? Smell? So, sorry, you so see? the pink, sorry, pink strawberries, like they pink look white to me. They just, yeah. like, they're called pink. I've never heard right. of that. The coloration that. kind of, uh, goes away a little bit once you start infusing oh. it, but it's a little bit less strawberry tasting as a red strawberry, so it's okay. almost unripened. It gives it a nice acidity, good okay. florality. The other element is dehydrating some pineapple and jalapenos, <gasps> grinding it up in a food processor, and mixing it with salt. Actually, that's what I do with my company, Love of Cocktails. We have nice little salt rimmers with all natural flavors, and that gives it a great tropical element to it without adding, again, too much sugar or too much flavor. Oh, that can we try? Of level. course. And while we oh, try, can wow. you just, so to, in order to dehydrate fruit and vegetables, right. you do need a device, right? 
Right, you don't have to though. If you have an oven and a baking <gasps> tray, you can absolutely lay it flat, uh, make sure it's nice and thin, and then just go really low on your temperature, about 150, and do it overnight. Oh, that's genius. Yeah. I'm going to be trying that. Okay, great. This is so light. Mm. It's so refreshing. It's not tequila hard the way you might think. <gasps> this might be my favorite. I think it's my favorite too. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay, we're going to continue to enjoy. But what's a last tip if you want to add some more fruits, um, maybe dehydrated fruits and veggies into cocktails? You can honestly just get really creative with it as I was showing you the different methods of infusing fruit in drinks. Um, what I really like to do is just get some dehydration going or do a puree or integrating it to just add some earthy flavors. Wow. So let's get creative. How Emma, delicious. You have inspired us. Thank you so much for infusing some spring into us and into our cocktails. And to find out more info on today's recipes, head to our social media pages after the show. Cheers, everybody. We'll be right back after this. Delish. Cheers. Delish. Cheers.